So, you know, there's a little bit of conspiracy to this because, you know, the, again, the pretext of this then is just for you to realize that you are pure light. And it's actually you're out there still. But all of this key maker series has been talking about these walls and these schisms that have actually been set up that are somewhat stepping down our abilities. And so it's almost like it's simple to see as a water hose. And, you know, that water hose may be something like an umbilical cord where we have this connection to this source that is all there ever will be. And if someone squeezes that, that cable, then the amount of energy or essence that gets to us is actually stepped down. And so that's one way of, of explaining it, because from, from what I see, and not only spiritually, but also read in many of the books that still contain a great deal of the knowledge, is that the existence of humanity in history is nothing like what the beings are existing like now. The level of power and manifestation is on an entirely different level. So I call it like, it's like the mini, the mini me's. And how this kind of works is, is that you could imagine that our ancestors were very vast and had a, a great deal of control over their consciousness, even in physicality. And this is why physicality has become somewhat of a, you know, uh, it's been demonized now. People hate physicality almost. They see it as, you know, like, oh, physicality, it's all an illusion. It's all been created. It's flat and blah, 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 blah. And then there'll be no end of stories that we will keep coming up with because is a limitation in our physicality. Like if you want to go and do something right now, if you just decide, man, I need to go and really check out Stonehenge, you may have passport issues. You may have plane ticket issues. You're going to have all these issues that actually impede you from being able to just get up and go do whatever you want to do in physicality. And in the past, in, in ancient time, it didn't actually exist that way. So you could imagine if you were on a physical plane to where you can now conceive rather than incept. So the astral plane is really, it, it's, it's, it's into ideals. It's into uh, ethereal uh, projection in itself. It's like basically a, a land of ideas. But to live out those ideas and to actually animate those ideas, well, that's what physicality is for. So as each being being supreme you would, in a certain sense, you had your own planet, and that's actually your, your body. So you, having your own body gives you access to this planet through your projector. And you know, just follow me with this here if it's getting a little complex. But through your own projector, it's like when you're going to sleep at night, you can actually end up in a real solid physical world in this state of consciousness that you're in. So the thing is, is that this is why it all starts to blur at a certain point. And it's because, well, if we don't have access to that now, it becomes almost unbelievable. And the only glimpse that we have of it is actually the dream world and deep dreaming to where you can actually be inside of a reality and pick dirt off the floor and smell things and, you know, get some some joy, joy and incitement and even experience pain. And then you're in this reality that's, quote unquote, supposed to be a dream. So what I'm saying is, is that this physical reality that we're living in now, the one that we're waking up to, is we wake up on another side of the wall that doesn't give us access to all of our powers and abilities like you see of what you do in the dream. Now, in the dream, you have, quote unquote, a physical reality or as much as a physical reality really could be. But you also have this waking state that seems to cut you off from that. And that's akin to almost like the cutting of the mother's umbilical cord. So here's how that works. When I was looking at some imagery that was uh, put together by the Royal Society, and this is the, during the Enlightenment era, this is the time in which uh, royalty, a certain group of royals, in this case it was Great Britain, decided that they would have their advent at looking into spirituality since their culture is more of a cave culture. And, you know, I won't say that as a negative thing, though, because cave culture has a lot to do also with being close to the mother. In this case, the mother is earth, rock, crystal, stone, hard foundation, hard upbringing, solid upbringing. So, you know, there is a power within every single culture. But the ethereal side, which doesn't connect necessarily with the cave, was virtually in, uh, not present for this group or spectrum of people. So when they went throughout the world, they saw that other people were deeply immersed in these 
high ethereal states of consciousness. So once they got to a point of being able to invest their time and energy on a professional royal level into figuring out how all that spiritual stuff really worked, then they put their best minds on it. And that created what we know as 100 years ago, the Enlightenment era. And during the Enlightenment era, which you can Google, you will see different images come up, like such as Haeckel's work, um, Medelieve's work. There's different people who were beginning to create. And because there was no TV, everything had to be illustrated. And what you see in some of these illustrations, uh, and I have some of those illustrations in the university course or some of those that have seen those illustrations, but it's basically using the lights to begin to create illusions. And this is much too complex of a topic for me not to dedicate an entire show to, but it basically involves overlaying. This is like when you can create as much of a dream as you what we dream, but it's overlaid with actual programming. So what happens is, is people don't actually perceive things the way that they actually are. And I'll give a little bit more background on this because, you know, that may be jumping too far ahead. But once the light is refracted, remember, once light is slowed down, it becomes more dense and then it becomes physical. OK, so if you can imagine that our ancestors, which is you, because <laughs> there's no separation, this is the new separation that's been connected. This is this is the new separation excuse me, that's been created. And this separation detaches us from great grandma, great, great grandfather, great, 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 great. And all as far as you can go back, it puts a line in between each of those segments. And that's why they like they like to describe this as a tree. Because if you notice, the tree also has those separation points. It has those lines in the tree to, okay, well, the tree is now grown, a, gone a whole nother cycle and it's older. And now, so it has a ring. And then that ring is the outer growth while a new ring is formed around that. Okay. So what this, what this is getting us to is, is that this separation that is created is actually what is stepping down our energy. And that's why they say, that generally the a woman's first children are the strongest children. And then as she continues to have children, those children get weaker and weaker and weaker. And so as the earth, the first beings that were here were of a certain magnitude. Some call them giants. But over the period of time of the continuous birthing from this womb, then it began to be less and less and less and less. And now you're dealing with mini man. So the real explanation behind that is, is that that's the refraction of the light. So whatever's causing it, because I started seeing this as, you know, just to get into some of the technical terms, it's like stereolithography. It's like using lasers to harden objects, uh, lasers projecting a specific image until the point where once that's gone into what we would call resin, in this case, the earth, then it's, it becomes hardened and then it becomes an, an image so that's why they say, well, you know, let us create man in our own image. We're not talking about some other beings attempting to actually create something that, because how could that even be possible? We, we, we're not created. We're unbegotten. What we're talking about is creating an ideal, slowing down the being, making the being think that they're not supreme, making the being think that they're not the universe. And this is the infection that's happening throughout the entire realm. Look at what's happening when you tell someone that they're a cosmos, they're still actually trying to attach on to some elder God or some book or and trying to make sense out of all that when truly we are a magnitude, we are very powerful beings, but we've been stepped down. And how that stepping down happens is on so many different levels, whether it's someone's refracting the light, that could be the moon, or whether it's someone psychologically programming you to believe that you're not who you really are. So in a sense, we're operating in slow motion. And this is what you begin to realize when you go into these stages it, through utilization of any vibrational frequency raising substance, be it air, breath, ayahuasca, whatever, is as your frequency starts speeding up, then you start to really see other things that are operating on other wavelengths. And when you get deeper into that study of wavelengths and frequencies, 
then you realize that the more rapid something is moving, the less you can actually see it. So all of the rapid moving beings, the things that are closer to the source, you can't actually see. Versus all the more denser an object gets, the further away it pulls itself from oscillation, the more it becomes visible. All the way down into the stone and even deeper than stones, right? So these are the vibratory frequencies and the wavelengths. So we're going to talk in this conversation, I'm just laying the foreground here, about how to come in and out of this phase, which also that's, that's called phasing, phasing in, phasing out. This is saying how to get out of this particular mindset, this phase that you're in, and how to speed up and get into a higher vibratory frequency to become more aware of what's really going on. So to to go into this a little bit deeper. So being this light, okay? Now, it makes our orbit or our path in this particular realm, our orbit or our path, like why you're here on earth, is because on your orbit, everyone has a different orbit. Some people live to 72. Some people live to 30. Some people live to 50. Some people live to, to 40 in a few months. That's your orbit. They call that your path. That's why people say, oh, you know, my path this lifetime. Okay, so that's the, your duration around this particular cell. So to me, when looking at that, it's highly possible then that a person could be repeating their path over and over and over and over and over again unless they somehow come out of that orbit. So this, this explains to us a lot about how this really works, how, how a cell or, or, or how uh, atoms and protons and all this form around the nucleus, et cetera, et cetera. Like when you just see those drawings, you don't have to know the science. Just look at those drawings. And then what those drawings begin to allow you to see is, oh my goodness, that's the orbits. That's the light. And when the light is stepped down, then it becomes physical. So there's also another term that's called recording. Right. Because this is why I say it can repeat over and over and over again, because I found an uncanny similarity between what records are, which are basically solidified crystals. And then when you vibrate that layer, that magnetic layer, when you vibrate it, it plays the sound over again. And I know I can I can even hear that this is, you know, it's beginning to be a little bit difficult to follow along with this, except for the ones who are, who are deep into this. But just bear with it, because during the, during as the conversation continues, it'll become more and more easier to understand what's going on. And I will say it takes me quite a bit to meditate through this. Like some people think that this is all knowledge. You know, he's just talking knowledge. Now, like, no, I sit in at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning and I meditate. And I just ask small questions like, so how could it be that way? And then it's like, well, you know, it's, say, it's the same mechanics as this. There's nothing that has been created in the world that hasn't been a direct replication of what's going on on a spiritual level. And as we continue to go, and 2016 is really the mega year, as we go further and further into this quote-unquote technology, the closer and closer that they get to releasing certain forms of technology, it's actually getting closer and closer to letting people catch on to what's going on with what's happening on the spiritual plane. Because everything that's put into technology, it comes from the yours truly, meaning the actual beings that we are. The ears being the speaker, the antennas being the hair, the eyes being the camera, all of these different forms of this tech. If, if some of the people that knew about it the most for one moment caught on that this was actually anything to do with their spiritual being, they will already know everything that was going on. So what's happening for us is, is that we're coming from these spiritual backgrounds and we're beginning to put two and two together. We're actually merging the worlds instead of saying, OK, well, you know, technology is, you know, the alien and, it, you know, it's foolishness and blah, blah, blah. Well, first of all, there's nothing new under the sun. Everything is just a replication of something else as above, so below. So what is the as above relationship between the human eye and the camera? There it is right there. So you take it one more level up, then it's a cosmos. You take it, you know, as they see the eye in the nebula, then you take it one more level up if you can go that far. 
So everything has that same kind of nature to it. And the more that we catch on to, wait, wait, this is what's really going on. That's why I say you can look at things like a record and say, well, wait a minute, what is a record really? It's crystal. It's a crystallized form. And then when you vibrate that crystal, it plays this sound or frequency. So could humans be somewhat of this on the same system to where during their orbit, which is the circumference of their record, that when they get vibrated and triggered, that they play out certain roles that they will continue to play out over and over and over again until they realize what's going on. Hence the term recording or to record, to put the cord, which is the twining, which is the coil, to coil it back up. And this is what they talk about. Well, the Kundalini is coiled up. And then when you have this awakening, it uncoils itself. And then, you know, I guess if you go back to sleep, it'll coil itself back up. Sometimes they use the term rebinding. This means that literally to be held back or to be held on or wound around something or binded to it and then to somehow try to come unraveled from it. So to get out of your same role, <laughs> literally. OK, so look at the words. This is my role. This is my path. That's the orbits. All this stuff can be taken literally. So the whole purpose then of true meditation is actually to learn to focus yourself back into the light of yourself, like a laser point, meaning that the accuracy of a laser is what we're actually dealing with, with who you are beyond all of this physicality. And the purpose of meditation is to, to guide yourself back into that point so that you can be all powerful and all focused and then fire your beam. See, I'm not saying to just get back to the laser point and chill there because you'll find just like most that think that everything is only internal, that there is something more, that this will never end. That, look at even the, the forte or the storyline of who God is, that God as the monad then breathes out and then he creates all the worlds and then he breathes in. Now, I don't go for those kind of stories, especially when there's a male character or a he attached to it. But what I'm saying is look at the underlying story here, that there's a breathing in and there's a breathing out. <laughs> So there's a creation and a manifestation, and then there's a nihilism in a, in, in a, in a point to where there's, there's nothing, okay? So this means that the laser point is the point of nothing. That's when you experience everything, right? Everyone knows that, you know, they, they talk about, you know, it's unfathomable, the energy levels of what we're talking about beyond all of this, right? So in, you're in, when you're in the laser point, you're just, <laughs> you're in the eye of the storm, I was in the eye of the storm the other night. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. Like you don't even want to try to put the mind around it or any uh, of the mechanics that we use on the planet around it or just strip it. It'll strip it right off it, because it can't even be confined into the ideal of what is that, right? So that's the laser point. But a being that is moving with purpose and that has purpose then takes that energy from that point and then fires it. Just like you see when they say that the light or the electron, which is what male, the male is, the L, the penis, basically, is fired into it. That he delivers a spark. And then that spark goes into that egg and then it creates life. Just like they say, well, if we let off a spark in the water, even on just a basic level, this is the as below version. If we let off spark inside of a water, a single cell life form will appear from nowhere and start the beginning of the process of what they call evolution. So it's all the same thing. All the knowledge is right there for us. And it has a spiritual and a physical nature to it. It doesn't have just one or the other. And then the, the, the one that's in the middle is actually the mind because the mind is responsible for making heads or tails of it, literally. So in conclusion of this first part, it's clear by this research from NASA that frequencies do affect, especially certain frequencies, can affect and rearrange or even pull apart DNA. So what that means is, is that there's a point to where if we're immersed completely in frequency, then we actually have a situation to where we can become less and less conscious of who we are. 
unless we're making a true intention every, at every single moment to be in that stage of meditation. As they say, meditation is not something that you just sit down and do and then get up and then go do something else. It's actually a state of mind. It's a way of being. So staying in that meditation, meditative mind actually keeps us from being absorbed into frequencies that throw off our consciousness and actually pull apart our DNA or our connection with our ancestors. So that's that part. And I'm glad that we got that. We got about more, five more minutes into this and um, into this particular segment. So I'll keep going. So it's also safe to say that many beings here, if not all the beings, I actually, you know, you can encompass it as that, all the beings are on a great magnitude but they're intentionally being departicalized and delocalized. Okay, that's what frequencies can do, like 60 hertz and 100 hertz. There's different frequencies that delocalize a person. So this is why you could see a person, it's kind of like they're just abstract. They're just distracted. It's like they're not exactly there, but they're here. And this is because that departicalization that goes on, that happens within the consciousness if we're not constantly aware. So what I was able to deep, dig deep into was once figuring out my origins in a certain tense, like, okay, so now I get it. So now I understand, you know, why I'm not in conflict up there and why conflict doesn't exist up there. But it, it does exist, but it's called something totally different. It's actually called merging. And then on here on the physical plane, that same merging is looked at as conflict and even looked at as consumption because I wanted to know why is eating such a major component on the dimension? I mean, every single thing just about consumes something, whether it's bird or fish, you know, always putting something in the mouth or inside of the body. And then now it has it inside of the body. Well, that's the light joining. So you do as a sentient life form, you can, I'll say, you can be conscious of what kind of lights that you cohabit with. And that alone in itself gives you a major power. And this is why I believe that the powers that we have are not as defined as throwing lightning and things from the hand, but as simple as watching the intake that we put inside of our body and what kind of lights that we're actually blending with, because that's going to actually determine everything. And then the height of this knowledge to me was that since there are so many stars in the sky, and that can definitely account for how many life forms that are here, especially when you look deeper into the zodiacal energies and what creates those energies, then it kind of leads to that the sun has this same thing going on. That the actual, what we see as a physical sun in the sky, actually at some point had to be stepped down, the light refracted, and then it, in, it itself incarnated into a physical form. And I think that this is what you're dealing with, with the old ancient kings, or aka the sun king, the king of kings. This would be in a certain tense where they learned all the king stuff from, because there had to be some kind of original uh, physical manifestation of the sun that actually be, uh, became stepped down over a prolonged period of time, just like we are. And it's not saying be that one it, excuse me. This is also how you get the difference in people's status. And I'm not saying so much as now because now it's all being tampered with. But before, if a star, let's say, is further out and not as close to this physical plane or this particular cell, then it may appear as just a beetle here versus if it's super close then it may actually appear as some kind of king. And if this, you know, it's tossing it around a bit, but it's very plausible because when you start understanding the refraction of light and the distance of light in the orbits, that actually is what creates whether a person is quote unquote all powerful on the dimension or minuscule. And then on top of that, what does really become the controlling integer is actually us. And this is where the power is back into your hands because you can still determine right now if you go on to this high rapid frequency based on your actions and activities and what you do with your body, your mind and soul, or if you stay in this lowly state so far from yourself. OK, because when we're to, when we say getting closer to the source, 
If you are the source, this means getting closer to yourself. So as a distant star, if you draw down your own light, then you can make yourself closer than even the sun is. And these are the concepts that lay the ground broader than concept, but they lay the ground to how one can become all seeing, all knowing and all powerful on this plane and beyond. So we're going to go into another break here. And then when we come forward, we're going to be um, getting into the questions. And there's a, just a few more things that I have to elaborate on in regards to this, mainly one more thing. And then the questions actually reveal a great deal. So I'll see you in just a moment. Feeling proud, look at me now, raw died and taking cleanses. I stay away from creeps, bad meat and doctor syringes. Being mostly all gas, my body feels tremendous. Did I mention when I sleep, I enter different dimensions? All in self because the vision can never equal the extension. If you listen, you really can come and get what you've been missing. I be wishing that you were just right here next to me, chilling. But this road keep calling my soul, saying to get it, so I'm gone.